Hey guys, welcome to Boxing Squared for Boxing News and Views from around the internet. Tyson Fury has been confirmed in a fight with Francis Ngannou to take place on October the 28th in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. So official now, this fight with Ngannou, I think this kind of felt like it was a little bit circus, that it was a little bit unrealistic, but here we are. So Fury will sacrifice a chunk of his heavyweight boxing career for effectively what is an exhibition, a crossover fight, which will be fought under boxing rules. So we've got a press release from Top Rank. We'll go through also uh, Queensbury's put out its own, but uh, they're identical. So this fight, how did we get here? Well, Tyson Fury has been wanting to uh, clip the ticket for big money in Saudi Arabia, and he's got an ex exhibition. He's been there before for the uh, WWE and now facing the former UFC champion Francis Ngannou. So it's being dubbed, you know, to find out who is the baddest man on the planet. So it's going to take place under the official rules of professional boxing with three judges ringside adopting the 10 point must system. Both fighters, however, are promising to meet in the middle of the ring, go to war and win by knockout in devastating fashion. Well, of course, fighters always say that Tyson Fury is not just going to go toe to toe with a massive puncher. I think he will probably be a little bit safety first um, to begin with, and then he will look to pick off and wear down and take out Francis Ngannou over the long haul. After all, you know, he is a good strategist. He's got the height and the reach. You know, he is longer than Francis Ngannou, so he's going to jab his head off. But Tyson Fury says, as soon as that bell goes, it'll be bombs away. The guy is supposed to be the hardest puncher in the world. But let's see how he reacts when he gets hit by the big GK. I can't wait to get back out there under the lights. I'm looking forward to showing the world what the Gypsy King, why the Gypsy King is the greatest fighter of his generation in an epic battle with another master of his craft. Francis looked tough when he jumped in the ring after the white fight, but there was no one tougher than me, and you'll all see in the devastating fashion on October 28. I'd like to thank my promoters, yada, yada, yada. It's going to be a fight for the ages. Get up. Well, it might be a fight for uh, the ages for his bank account, but probably not one that is going to be one that fans are going to be sort of talking about as one that they always want to see, unless Francis Ngannou springs an upset. And given some of Tyson Fury his recent behavior, the way he's been moving and shedding fans like nobody's business. I'm sure a lot of people will want to see Tyson Fury get knocked out, but I could also see a lot of fans boycotting the fight. You've got Francis Ngannou saying, I've been waiting to meet Tyson Fury in the ring for the past three years. My dream was always to box and to box the best. After becoming the undisputed MMA champ heavyweight champion, this is my opportunity to make that dream come true and cement my position as the baddest man on the planet. I'd like to thank Riyadh Season, so that's the promoter, you know, the, the local outfit, etc., helping put on the fight. I mean, you can sort of spin it all the ways that you want, but Francis Ngannou and Tyson Fury, this is not actually a sanctioned fight, as far as I can tell, for his WBC heavyweight title. And if it were, it'd be a travesty because Ngannou has not put in, in any work to, to deserve a title shot by beating other fighters before making his way up to face someone in Fury who is the champion in the WBC. It's an exhibition effectively under boxing rules that's going to make everyone involved a lot of money. More money than Francis Ngannou's probably ever seen in his UFC career. Uh, in terms of uh, some of the other comments, we'll just get to um, Frank Warren and Bob Arum and then move on to some thoughts. This heavyweight clash has war written all over it. Tyson Fury is the most exciting heavyweight on the planet. It's a game changer. We don't want to wait for Tyson to get out here and we're at Riyadh season in a super fight. Tyson is his best when he's breaking new boundaries and this event is one of a kind. History will be made in Riyadh with a battle of the giants of the two leading codes of combat fighting. Well, I mean, France is Ngannou is a former champion. He's not the leading heavyweight right now, is he? I mean, that's a question uh, mark for, uh, you know, MMA fans. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to say that I know all the ins and outs of the heavyweight division on MMA. So let me know anyway. So Bob Arum says Tyson Fury is one of the finest heavyweight boxers in history, and he now has an opportunity to lock horns with an MMA legend. This will be a historic event, and we know that Tyson Fury will put on a tremendous fight. The people in Riyadh and fight fans around the world are in for a real treat. Well, it sounds like Tyson Fury's going to be, um, you know, basically taking the fans for a ride to some extent. 
and uh, you know robbing the bank with this sort of event. I mean, there's been all this talk from Fury that no one wants to fight him, and you've had the WBC living in his rectal cavity, basically running a defense for him, claiming no one wants to fight him. But it couldn't be further for the, uh, from the truth. Basically, Fury has been looking for the biggest amount of money, lopsided terms, and he wants to basically cash in. And he's got the ability with his profile um, to be able to do that to some degree. But there is an argument to say that there's plenty of contenders in the WBC rankings that are ready and willing to fight. You've had someone like Luis Ortiz coming out um, the other day saying he'd fight for free. Frank Sanchez has been calling him out. Tyson Fury's been claiming no one will fight him. Frank Warren's been trying to... Uh, make out no one will fight him and basically saying that it was Usyk who didn't make the undisputed fight happen. I think anyone who's been following the situation closely knows that Tyson Fury didn't sign his end of the deal earlier this year. What we have had from Tyson Fury is a mandatory in what was it, April or May of 2022 against Dillian White and then he gave us a fight against Derek Chisora, the third fight that no one called for, no one wanted, but he sold it to us on the basis he needed some activity before the Usyk fight, which he never signed us into the deal for and basically mucked Usyk around, forcing Usyk to pull out because there was no deal made a month before the fight because Fury hadn't made his end of the deal. Since then, he's been spraying all over, you know, social media, the media more broadly about who he wants to fight. And it sort of seems to be he's changing potential opponents or had been more than he was changing his underpants. So I guess in some regards, at least we, we're not going to hear that sort of carry on for a while because he's got Nganu in the sights now for October the 28th. But it's another chunk of his heavyweight career that he's not dedicating to building his legacy in the heavyweight division. He's uh, going off for a money grab in Saudi Arabia against a uh, former UFC champion who's got no standing in the sport of boxing. Sure, he might be a puncher, but let's face it as well, Francis Ngannou is not exactly young either. He's on the wrong side of 35. So, you know, you do have a case. You've got a guy who's untested and unproven in boxing, but these guys are doing it for the money. It's not about um, pushing boundaries and all that sort of stuff. It's about money, pure and simple. But Tyson Fury has had uh, some words for critics in recent days who have been saying that he should be stripped of his belt if he faces uh, Francis Ngannou or anyone other than someone in the WBC Top 15. So here's what Fury had to say a couple of days ago. Hey guys, a little bit of clarification. There's a lot of unknown, irrelevant people talking about how I should be stripped of my belt. Ha <laughs> ha! Don't hate the player, hate the game. I don't have a mandatory. When I do have a mandatory, it'll be dealt with, just like every other mandatory I've ever had. Um, until then, keep on hating, mother and enjoy little, 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 little tiny bit of money that you guys are making while the big G's in the house. And I guess that sort of reaction just personifies um, Tyson Fury's oafish behavior recently and how he's become deeply unlikable. From the guy that has uh, was at one point a bit of a darling after the whole sort of initial um, comeback and then beating Deontay Wilder and he'd got a lot of support. He's basically thrown that all away in the past year or so with his antics and activity. So this is not a fight that I needed to see, was calling to see, but it's the fight we've got. So what have we got in Francis Ngannou? Obviously he's got a puncher's chance, but in the sport of boxing, you know, even with, I've seen his, um, quite a few of his um, MMA fights before. Yeah, he's a good striker, but it's, it's not like, you know, what he's doing is full on boxing technique. Um, the footwork is, you know, a lot of what he's doing is tailored for the octagon. It's not tailored for boxing. And, you know, I think he's going to find that he's woefully out of his depth against Tyson Fury. He's got a puncher's chance, but that's about as much as I'd be giving him. He's going to have to be aggressive and make the fight and try to put it on Tyson Fury. But maybe because Fury's a bit older, the footwork might be a bit slower. But Tyson Fury knows how to look after himself. He's got a good chin. He knows how to wrap up, use his arms like an octopus. He could probably do an Lawrence Acoli sort of style moves if he wanted to. But also, if he 
he keeps it at range, he's just going to jab Nganu's head off all night and he'll be landing some long hooks, some long right hands, and you're probably going to see over a course of a number of rounds, Francis Nganu just wear down and be gassing out before Tyson Fury really starts to step it up and try to take him out. I don't see Tyson Fury going straight into the center of the ring and um, sort of bombs away. I, I think if he did that and got knocked out, well, there'd be a huge irony that he took this uh, fight that he should win against a guy who's not a boxer, who's got power, but is not a boxer. Uh, and also it'd probably destroy some potential um, big fights down the line that he probably does want to have uh, in Saudi Arabia in the heavyweight division against legitimate boxing heavyweight contenders. But it is what it is. You know, we've got it. What do you make of this? What do you make of Tyson Fury having this fight with Francis Ngannou? I think the thing is, if if Fury was fighting three or four times a year, it wouldn't matter. I, I wouldn't feel that strongly about it. As it is, I'm a little bit ambivalent about the whole thing that I'm just like, well, Tyson Fury's been on such a you know pedestrian sort of uh, you know run of opponents recently with only one in the past year and it was a washed Derek Chisora at uh, Chisora I'm just kind of like with all his antics and behavior it just kind of you know of course he was going to do something like this because he's clearly making it about the money it's not about the fans it's about trying to clip the ticket for the most money possible so you know from that standpoint it's totally Tyson Fury you know, the talk of legacy and other bits and pieces, it's just a thinly veiled shroud for, you know, filling his bank account. Anyway, drop a comment loud and often, hit like, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, boxing underscore squared. I'm out.